Hey everybody, it's Coach Richard Wharton here with today's Exert Daily Ditty. And in today's work, what I wanted to show you all was some of the uh, physiological features that are occurring with the uh, physical values that we see through Exert. Uh, now here I'm using uh, some different software, but you can see the Exert rainbow dial on the upper left hand corner. Below that, I've got a camera angled at the uh, gas exchange analysis information coming off of the um, VO2 master, which is the uh, mask that you can see on me as I'm pedaling uh, on my rollers. The workout is uh, some Biot 3030s, and there's another sort of uh, rotary dial that shows the information coming off of Perf Pro 2020 which is sort of top center. Now, the thing to look at here is the lower right-hand corner where it says VO2 on the gas exchange analysis. We've also got respiratory frequency on the upper left. We've got tidal volume on the upper right. Between tidal volume and VO2, we've got uh, power, which is showing every revolution and it's coming off of the crank. And below respiratory frequency, we've got THB, which is my total hemoglobin count coming off of my uh, muscle oxygen sensor on the left leg. And then we've got SMO2, which is the saturated muscle oxygen, uh, and that's given in a percentage of 0 to 100%. Then to the left of that, we've got heart rate, and above that, I've got uh, ventilatory expulsion in liters per minute. Now, what does all of this mean? Um, Basically, think about this. When the exert dial is uh, blue or the arrow is in the blue section, this is a recovery work uh, uh, phase. It's a recovery from an interval. When I program it, when I, when I increase my intensity and move into yellow or orange, um, I really want you to pay attention to the VO2 numbers as well as the, um, TH, uh, the SMO2 numbers and the heart rate. So here we are, I'm in my second or third interval, and the VO2 is at 55. Power is in the 350s or 330s. VO2 is now at 56 and then 57. Look at the SMO2, it's down to 9.6%. All right, heart rate is continuing to go up. VO2 is continuing to go up. Now, even as I recover, watch the VO2. It's still at 60, 59.8. 59.9, 58.7, 56.3. I've got 20 seconds left on the recovery, but yet I am still in the above 85% of my VO2 max. My VO2 max is roughly 65 to 68 uh, milliliters per kilogram per minute. And you can see that the VO2 is, stays above 50 all the way through the recovery. Now I immediately get into another interval and heart rate only changes about 10 to 12 beats at the most, but you can see that the exert rainbow dial is showing me right in the yellow range. VO2 is now coming back up into the 50s, mid 50s. SMO2 is right back down into the single digits, so I'm really putting the squeeze on my legs. And heart rate is now at 172 and 173. VO2 is almost at 90 some odd percent. 57 is what we see. And there's a 174 on the heart rate. Now respiratory frequency is a little bit on the high side because let's face it, I'm, I'm working pretty hard. I've been told by another professional coach that my, that my tidal volume for lungs is actually kind of low. And that is something that I will probably work on starting in um, February or March. I probably should have done it earlier this year. But notice that VO2 does not dip below 50. And what makes these so good, and this is the study that Veronique Biot, the woman that was behind the 30-30 and 60-60 and uh, five by three minute intensity uh, protocols, she figured this out in the late 80s and early 90s. If you do these repeat intervals, what you end up with is greater time at or above your maximal aerobic power, which is VO2 max. Now, I don't think I get to 60 here, 
but you can see that I tickle it several times. That was a 59.2 and things. Now that the, the, the drop right there sometimes has to do with me uh, swallowing or uh, blowing my nose in the mask, to be honest. It's, it's, it's kind of a gross uh, exercise sometimes. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you. You can see that SMO2 is actually rebounding during this recovery in the final 15 seconds. And usually on the first 15 seconds or so, SMO2 will also continue to rise because it's by now paler uh, muscle, um, you know, the, the legs are. So it's just something to sort of think about and take a look at. Uh, let's see, what else? So yeah, there it was at 13, now it's back down to 11. Heart rate doesn't really change more than about eight to 10 beats at the most. VO2 is right back up in the high 50s. And you can also see, if you look carefully, uh, my MPA continues to drop in the uh, pink rainbow dial. And it's, it's, I'm biting into uh, what's left. Now, what you don't see and what I was viewing myself was the time to exhaustion and time to recovery because I am sort of semi-practicing for Saturday's uh, five-minute MMP breakthrough. Anyway, that's about it. I know it's running a little bit long, but I thought I would share uh, just sort of what's going on physiologically while you're looking at the physical things. Uh, a, a gas mask is not, is not cheap or easy, uh, but if you're ever curious, um, you can always come pay me a visit up here in northern Nevada, and I will gladly uh, make an arrangement to go through some workouts and or a testing protocol to see what that number is versus what we might assume it is. That's really about it. Don't forget to uh, copy the link down below so that you can sign up for our webinar, which is going to be held at 1200 hours GMT minus eight on January the 30th of 2021. And we will discuss the uh, protocol of progression and periodization beginning November the 28th of 2020 and lasting all the way through my five MMP breakthrough effort that's uh, just going to be finished by the time you get to the webinar. So we'll review the test, we'll review the program, and we'll look at the pros and cons of everything. Thanks so much and enjoy the ride.